Okay, so as we know, we have uh, we have finished our discussion on al -Qidah. Now we are discussing on the second uh, syllabus, which is al -Ibadah. And now, inshallah, today we are going to discuss on the third pillars of Islam, which is al zakat Yeah? Are you sure the third one? What is the first uh, pillars of Islam? Shahada. The second one is? Salat. So, zakat is the, is the third one. Okay? <laughs> okay. Alright. And zakat in uh, in English is translated as alms. Yeah. All right. So let's see the definition of zakat. So literally, a zakat is derived from the Arabic word zakal, which means to purify, to cleanse, and to flourish. So that's why you have heard the word tazkiyah to nafs. Have you heard the word tazkiyah to nafs? Uh, it comes from the word zakat as well. And tazkiyah to nafs means purification of your soul, menyucikan diri, menyucikan roh. Okay? Alright. So, zakat means to purify your your property. Menyucikan harta. Okay? So, hence, as zakat means the purification of property. Conceptually, it refers to the act of setting aside a portion of Muslims' wealth in kind or coin distributed among the rightful beneficiaries. Beneficiaries is the translated word for al-asnaf. The recipient of zakat. They are called al-asnaf. Yeah? Which is done annually. So zakat is not a charity but a compulsory payment by the rich to the rightful person. Yeah? It is a social claim as a matter of right and not as charity on the wealth of the rich. By paying the poor due, the rich are in fact paying back their debt to the to the society. You know, because in Islam we believe in the concept of one ummah. Okay, we are somehow related to our brothers and sisters. So we have our own obligation towards towards them. And one of the obligations, except you know, beside uh, dakwah and so on, is also to pay, to pay zakat. Okay. And if zakat is properly paid and also properly distributed, there will be no cases of poverty anymore. Okay. All right. Uh, and then all wealth and riches belong to God. It is entrusted to us by Him, so that we may satisfy our needs and help our less fortunate brothers to satisfy their requirement. So thus the purposes of zakat are okay, I will go very uh, fast okay, because we will go to the calculation part later on. Yeah. Okay, number one, to prove our faithfulness to our master by making material sacrifice in obedience to his command and also for his pleasure. You know, to pay zakat, it is not easy. Okay? Uh, if you don't believe me, just wait until you become a rich person. And then you will know it is not so easy to sacrifice some portion of your of your wealth. Okay, just to pay or just to help someone that you don't even know. Yeah? Alright. And number two, to help the poor section of the community to meet their basic needs without any help and inconvenience in the best way possible. This is called the system of a takaful. You know, takaful does not always refer to insurance. Okay? The literal meaning of takaful means when you help each other we call it mutual assistant so whenever you pay zakat you are actually assisting and helping your your brothers and sisters in Islam okay all right and number 3 to achieve equitable distribution of wealth you know if you learn economy for example it is very important for one country to have the equitable distribution of wealth okay you cannot be like you know some people are very rich some people are very poor the gap is very huge it cannot happen in one in one particular country if that happen it is a sign that the economy is not is not growing very very good all right okay along with the operation of just economy and the zero rate of interest transaction so that no one in the community is deprived of its benefit you know right now even in our country we can still find some banks you know which are offering what we call it the, the riba loan you know the loan with riba right you know if the poor people they, they go to bank for example and they want to take this loan they are going to be burdened not just with the loan, but they are going to be burdened as well with the amount of riba or interest that they have to pay. But when they receive zakat, zakat is not a loan, right? They don't have to pay back, and not just that, there is no riba as well. So you can help your, you can help your Muslim brothers and sisters, and at the same time you can help the community to run away from the riba we system. Okay. Alright, and number four is to protect the community from confusion and from the danger of conflict between rich and the poor. You know, if you study the history, this always happened. If you study French Revolution, for example, you know, in, in France, it happened because there, there, there was so many you know, gap between the rich and the poor. 
Okay, so the poor they were not happy with the rich, and that's why they kill the rich. And the rich they are not happy of the, for uh, how many? They are not happy with the poor, and that's why they are taking all the poor to be their slave. So the conflict will happen. Okay. And number five is to encourage the investment and discourages the hoarding of wealth in the community. Okay. It is actually to encourage the investment. When you pay zakat, you are actually investing for your akhirah. Okay, maybe you will not get the the, the what we call it the alarm what we call it the dividend now, but you will surely get the dividend in in the year after. Okay, but trust me, if you pay zakat, you will also get the dividend in this world. Okay, because Allah has mentioned in the Quran, you know, if you contributed some amount of your money, Allah will give you back in the multiplying. Amount, okay. All right. So let's see the recipient of zakat. Okay, because some people ask, you know, can I receive zakat or should I pay zakat? Which one? Am I the payer or the recipient? Yeah. Okay. The first recipient of zakat is al masakin. Okay. Al masakin is the plural of miskin in Arabic. Yeah. So miskin means the poor who are unable to support themselves and their family. Okay, to be more exact, the definition of poor is those people who can only meet half of their necessity. Let's say for example, you know, let's say for example, I need 10 ringgit per day in order to survive in Kuala Lumpur. But I can only have, I only have 5 ringgit per day. So I have half only, right? So I am categorized under the category of masaki. Half only. Okay, and then the next one is al fuqara the fakir, yeah? the needy who have lost their wealth and source of income due to various factors. And to be more exact, it refers to those people who can only meet their, their necessity less than half. Uh, let's say for example, I need 10 ringgit per day. I cannot even afford to have 5 ringgit, but I have only 3 ringgit per day. So I'm categorized under the category of the fakir. So you can pay zakat to me. Example, alright? Okay. Okay, number three. Al Amil. Yeah? Those officials who are engaged in the collection of, of zakat. If they say, for example, Ustaz Zakat Selangor appointed me to collect zakat from all of you, then I can get some some portion. Yeah? From the collection of zakat. And number four, Al Muhallaf. Okay, new converts to Islam who need help in order to re establish and rehabilitate them. In their new life, because normally what happens to the converts? Number one, they are always dumb by the family, so they need our help. And sometimes even their relative and their society also will will alienate them, so they need our help. And that's why they are what qualified them to receive zakat. Yeah. And number five is our recall. Okay, our recall refers to slave who are given a chance to redeem himself. But nowadays we no longer have slave, right? Anybody here is slave to anyone? No. Alright? So the today, the scholars have interpreted the term as referring to those who have gone astray from the right akidah and akhlaq but are trying to go back onto the right track. For example, drug addicts, prostitutes, and, 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 and etc. Okay? Uh, someone who have gone astray but he's trying to, to be good back. Okay? Alright, and number five, uh, number six is al ghorimin those who have incurred debts in meeting their lawful and essential need and cannot pay them back. For example, debt of medical need. Yeah? We have heard this thing, right? For example, someone is you know is sick, is suffering from like you know the heart disease. You know, if if this person goes into hospital it will cost like thousand, right? So this person is is eligible or is or we call it qualified to, to receive zakat. Yeah? And number seven is Ibn Sabil, travelers rendered helpless in foreign country while in pursuit of lawful academic and economic activity. So those who are not from Selangor and KL, right now you are in KL and you are helpless. You have no job, but you are trying to find job. You can actually get zakat, but you have to go to pusat zakat, okay? And, or you can ask from from the people around you. You know, I'm one of the recipient of zakat. Can you pay me zakat? Okay. But of course, this thing is very controversial, lah. Whether we can pay zakat on our own or we have to pay to pusat zakat. Okay. And we will discuss about this later. Inshallah. Yeah. 
Alright. And number eight is fee sabilillah. Okay, it is also spent on various kind of activity undertaken in the service of Islam. It is not just for war. It's for any other activities in the name of Islam. For example, you want to build masjid. You want to build the, the school. Okay, it is shari'ah compliant, obviously. And you can you can pay zakat to that school or for that school. Or the school can can receive zakat. Yeah. All right. And this is very obvious. Yeah, in the in the saying of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the Quran. So Allah mentioned, "Awwal bi dalim shaytan rajim. Inna masada qatul al fuqara wal masakin wal amili amil wal muallafati kudubuhum." Okay, this refers to muallaf. But somehow the ulama they have various interpretation on the term muallaf. Some ulama say only non only those non Muslim who have converted to Islam can receive zakat. But some ulama say any non Muslim who have shown their interest. To convert to Islam, we can give them zakat already. In order to encourage them, you get the point. Okay, but of course it depends on it depends on the interpretation of the of the ulama and the current rules and and regulation used by one particular nation. Yeah, alright. And then wafir rikab, the rikab that's now walwari min wafi sabillah wabni sabil fari al tamin Allah Allahu alimun hakim. Okay, Allah mentioned zakat expenditure are only for the poor and for the needy, for those employed to collect zakat, for the bringing heart uh, and for bringing hearts together for Islam. Okay, this is the mu'allaf is now, and for freeing captive or slave and for those in debt and for the cause of Allah and for the stranded traveller. And this is an obligation imposed by Allah, and Allah is knowing and and wise. All right. So the importance of zakat in Islam is proved by its obligation, which is always packed together with the obligation of salat. Okay, whenever you look at the Quran, whenever Quran say Aki Musala, and then what is that is zakat. So the obligation or the commandment of paying the the zakat is always packed together with with salat. So this is to prove that the obligation of zakat is really really important. Okay, so you know if before this you never pay zakat, this is the time for you to do. To do tawbah and pay the zakat, if you should pay the the zakat, because zakat is actually to clean our our property. Okay, because remember, okay, one of the question that Allah will ask in in alam barzah or or during the day of judgment is where did you spend your your money or your property? <coughs> yeah, yeah. So if you spend it just for yourself, you know, without thinking of others, without doing charity, without paying the zakat. Then you know that the property will be a burden for you during the day of judgment. Yeah, alright. And zakat fitrah, uh, and zakat has two types: zakat fitrah or badania. Everybody is familiar with zakat fitrah. You know, before hari raya we have to pay zakat fitrah. People know that. And zakat mania or property. But this type of zakat, the second type, has a lot of confusion among among society. And some of, of the portion of society they don't even know what is zakat or property. Ozakat, harta, you call it in Bali. Yeah. Alright. So let's see here. Okay. Let's see first the precondition of zakat. So now you 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 want to know whether you have to pay zakat or not. Okay. Number one, you must be a Muslim. Yeah. Number two, you must be a free individual, free person. You are not slave to anyone. Yeah. Number three, total possession. Okay, of the property, we call it in Arabic as al milkut tam, a total and absolute possession. Let's say, for example, <coughs> this phone is not mine; it belongs to the company, so I don't have to pay zakat of the value of this phone because this is not my total possession. This doesn't belong to me absolutely, but if the my money in the bank, I I own it absolutely, so I have to pay zakat of saving. Zakat simpanan. Alright. And number four is nisab. Okay, what is nisab? Is the property possessed my must reach certain amount. Uh, let's say I have money in the bank, three hundred ringgit. Should I pay zakat? Uh, we will see the amount. But I have in the in the bank three hundred thousand. Should I pay zakat? Yes. Uh, let's see. Okay. <laughs> right. So in general, the nisab of zakat of property, okay, other than zakat fitrah or badania. Is the amount equivalent to nine eighty five gram or twenty miskal? This is not miskal of the phone, yeah. 
<laughs> this is the this is the the unique use during the time of the Prophet sallallahu It is also mentioned in the Quran. Okay, fama yamal mithqal azaratin sharran yar. That's all. Mithqal. Yeah. All right. So a uh, one mithqal, uh, I will show you after this. Okay. Yeah, is the amount equivalent to 85 gram or 20 mithqal of gold as mentioned by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in hadith. Okay. Prophet say, if you are not bound, you are not bound to pay zakat of gold except when it reaches the amount of 20 mithqal. If it reaches the amount of 20 miskal, you have to pay half miskal as its zakat. Okay, narrated by Abu <coughs> and by Haki. So one miskal is equivalent to 4.25 gram nowadays. So 20 miskal to 4.25 times 20 equivalent to 85 gram. And half miskal, 0.5 from 20 miskal is equivalent to 2.5%. So that's why our zakat is very simple, 2.5% out of the entire amount of money that we, that we have. Okay, the obligation of zakat, of gold, is mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran, in Surah Tawbah. So Allah says, Ya ayuhal ladina amanu, inna kathiran min al-ahbari wa ruhbai la ya'kuluna amwala nas bil baqil wa yasudduna an sabilillah wa ladina yaknizuna al-zahab wal fiddah wala yunfiquna ha fi sabilillah fa bashiruhum bi azabin alim okay so Allah mentioned in the Quran the, the second part of the ayat okay Allah said those and yeah, this one walladhina yaknizu those who have kept some amount of gold and also silver and do not pay its zakat and then give them the what the bad news gold and silver so what is the bad news? Uh, we will see that because Prophet has described this bad news in the hadith. <coughs> okay, and this is it. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned those who refuse to pay the zakat. Prophet said, the owners and possessors of gold and silver who do not pay their zakat will be seated on a huge rocky field located in the hellfire. They will be burned in the hell of Jahannam, one type of the hell, and their cheeks, eyebrows, and hips will be iron. Ah, oh, sorry, cheeks. It is not that. This is chicken. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, no. Okay. And eyebrows and hips will be iron. You know what is iron? Yes. Yeah. Straight color, yeah. All right. So the zakat of gold. Sorry. The zakat of gold includes the one which is kept, such as gold bar coins and etc and the one which is used as ornament for hiasan yeah? the nisab of stored gold is 20 miskal uh, the nisab i mean the, the the amount the amount must reach 20 miskal all right however the nisab of golden ornament this is the perhiasan as now is according to uruf according to the custom yeah? so if you have the ornament perhiasan more than 800 gram so you go back after this to your houses and you check it. If it is more than 800 grams, <laughs> then you have to pay zakat. 2.5% from the total amount. And the amount will be based on the current price of the gold. Yeah? We will see. Right? Okay, self expenses. For your own self, you have to deduct 8,000 per year. Yeah? Per year. Per year. Yeah? This is basic deduction, alright? And then for your wife, one wife, 300 ringgit, 3,000 ringgit, per wife. One wife, one wife. One wife. One wife. Yeah. One wife. Yeah. So it's 12,000. Yeah. You have four then, it's 12,000. No, this is not. Hey guys, don't get four. Right? No. <laughs> this is not a license for you to just simply get four. <laughs> yeah, this is not. This is not a what we call it a challenge for me to promote polygamy. I'm not trying to do that. Yeah, I'm just. I'm just saying that for one wife, three thousand ringgit. Yeah, and then for your children, one thousand ringgit per per head. Yeah, and then for parents, uh, any amount of money that you give to your parents. They say if you give one thousand ringgit per month. Then you have to times 12 and then you did that 12,000. Yeah. No. Uh, as long as your children are living with you. Yeah. 
you are still paying for the bills then yeah and then kwsp okay how many contribution of kwsp or epf per year uh, normally 11 percent yeah, of the income okay, and then you just just deduct one okay but some company they deduct even 13 percent uh, so it depends on your on your company yeah, the deduction okay okay that is one format okay another format okay so after all deduction if your income is more than 85 gram the value of 85 gram of gold then you have to pay the the zakat if it is not more than it is not wajib to pay zakat after all deduction yeah? okay other format of deduction food and beverages they have to deduct okay and then your education if you are still studying and then accommodation okay if you are renting any house then you deduct that and then for the medicine if you are suffering in any kind of sickness okay or if you just go to the hospital and then transportation and also for your for your dress and your clothes is that for uh, that is the format of lhdn actually okay uh, you can still use it use that we call it it falls under the category of charuman takaful or charuman to any organization that pay zakat because takaful uh, takaful in Malaysia they pay zakat on your behalf so when you pay to takaful you you don't have you don't have to pay zakat anymore you have to that. Yeah. but remember yeah, the obligation of zakat is really personal in nature because if you don't pay your zakat nobody else will know but remember Allah Allah knows everything. Okay? Yeah. And trust me, if you if your if your property is not clean, you will suffer a lot. Okay? And that's why if you keep losing money, it is actually the best time for you to sit down and think about your zakat. Have I paid my obligation off?